morning everybody uh, this is uh, regarding sterilization i'll go very quickly with this because we have about 50 minutes video interactive session it's going to be very interesting so this is just a theory i'm going to just run through it sterilization depends it's in the descending order of resistance the most resistant is the bacterial spores that's why we use the spores in validating sterilization if you can kill the destroy the spores your sterilization is perfect and uh, eliminate or totally destruct the entire thing is called sterilization whereas disinfection we bring down the load so sterilization is complete removal either physical or chemical process suppose you have 1 million you are supposed to remove all the 1 million of it then only you call it sterilization but it may not be practically possible so we have a sterility assurance level that means if you leave 1 million spores in if you at the maximum is allowed as one that is one in 1 million can be allowed to survive that is the standard you should maintain for sterilization that is what is needed for ophthalmic practice also so you have the CSSD the central sterile supply department it should be always unidirectional the waste collected from the theater has to be washed clean packed and go gone for sterilization and come back to the theater in a different path not the same path you it should not be the same place where you clean where you pack everything should not be in the same place and the trolley what you are carrying the waste should not carry the sterilized back so it should be unidirectional and these are the equipments used so coming to the type of sterilization we have the physical as well as the chemical but we are going to deal mostly with the steam sterilization you look at that 121 for 15 minutes whereas in dry heat it is 121 for 6 hours what you should understand is air is a poor conductor of heat you need a very high temperature for you to get the same standard of sterilization so it is the steam and this point you should remember when you are talking about autoclaves the air has to be removed completely before you sterilize the instrument what you want to do, sterilize so I am going to go deal a little detail about steam sterilization there are three factors in steam sterilization the temperature the saturation of the steam and the time of exposure all three are equally important for the uh, sterilization to occur so these are the parameters shown in 15 minutes at 121 to 123 at 15 to 18 psi or 3 minutes at 132 to 135 at 27 to 30 psi so this is the diagrammatic representation of an autoclave and the principle is the vacuum production is vital in sterilization so whenever you buy an autoclave see that the vacuum cycle is there for your autoclave so once the air is removed the chamber is open and the steam is let in and the process is continued so what is the first part or the first phase is the vacuum phase then the filling up phase and the third is the kill phase this is the time where the real autoclave occurs followed by drying phase if you get, take out the autoclave thing which is wet and if you store it it's no more sterile so you have to dry it there are there are four cycles in autoclaving and the advantage it is readily available it's not very expensive non toxic the only thing is only heat stable items can be autoclaved and this efficacy depends not just autoclaving how you clean the instrument how it is properly disinfected that means the amount of load you're going to give to the autoclave for it to work if you're going to reduce it from 100 million to just 1 million your process is going to be easier and then packing drying loading everything all this you're going to see practically in the video which is going to follow this and validation we have different validation 
we have we put in a sticker there we bring it out and say yes it is autoclave no you need to have the class 6 autoclave and the class 2 is only to see if there is proper vacuum created in the equipment while validation one is the bovidic test that will be shown in the video following this and what we have is this if there is an air pocket, that uniform discoloration will not take place. There will be patches of air pocket. And now what we have, the elix test. This is a long tube. And you put the indicator in one end and see if, if there is no vacuum in the chamber, the air within the tube is not brought out. So it will not change color. So this is a test. It's called the elix test, PCD or uh, process control device and validation should be for TST temperature saturation as well as time and different classes of uh, sterilizing indicators are there class one just says that the pack has gone into the steri uh, sterilizer and it come out and class one is only the temperature sensitive thing class two you saw now about the vacuum class three and four are any two parameters Class 5, the difference between class 5 and class 6 is class 5 changes gradually. So when you take out, is it autoclave? No. Yes, no. But class 6 abruptly changes. The yellow becomes blue in a second. It's something a sharp end. It comes, drops. You know, it's not a slope. So once it drops, you're sure it is autoclave. But whatever was said and done, uh, I was talking about the uh, TST thing. Whatever was said and done, the biological indicator is the best indicator. That means you're practically killing one million spores and telling you, it tells you, yes, you have done your autoclave well. The problem with this, to get a result whether the spores are uh, killed or not, you'll have to culture it. That is going to take 48 hours. So your test is, you'll have to wait until you use the sterilized pack for 48 hours. Now we have the instant mini bio plus indicators which has come to the market. Within 40 minutes, you'll get a result. And there is nothing like biological indicator. If you have the biological indicator, you're sure about what you're doing. And this is the TST, which the class 6 chemical indicator, which is practically as good as biological indicator. Please start using this. And the flash is meant for instantaneous sterilization. It cannot be stored because there is no drying cycle. Once you take out it, the instruments are wet. You cannot store it. So use it only for emergencies. And uh, I'm not going into the details about the vertical and the horizontal. Vertical has got the problem of uh, uh, what, do you, what do you say, the air removal. The vacuum process is not very perfect in vertical. It, is, it works only with the gravity. So it is better that when you compare it, the horizontal, which has got a separate chamber for the steam, is far better than the vertical. And steam advantage, disadvantage, you have seen already. I'm not going into the details. Now we have the ETO sterilization. It's a low temperature sterilization. But whatever said and done, it, ETO is a very dangerous gas. And uh, the uh, problem is it takes about 20 to 24 hours for it to sterilize. Because proper aeration has to be done after sterilization. Otherwise, the residual toxin will be harmful to the eye. The alternative is the plasma generated uh, sterilizer, or it's called the plasma sterilizer, wherein uh, free radicals are produced when uh, hydrogen uh, peroxide is uh, cut with the uh, RF knife. These radicals help to kill the microorganism. The problem with this is it cannot sterilize linen, wood, powders, and liquids. And the machine is very expensive for you to handle. So to summarize, look, look at that. 
uh, except for the polythene, anything else can be steam sterilized. Formalin is no more being used because we don't have a standardization for it. We don't have an indicator to say that the article is uh, sterilized. So ETO is left and gas yes, plasma is left. So conclusion, it is important to remember that any organism in the wrong place at the right time is the potential pathogen. Thank you. We'll go to the video. So before I go to the video, uh, let me give a small introduction. You, you must have heard about phenolphthalein. It's an indicator. So it turns, it's colorless, and it turns purple or pink color in alkaline medium. So we managed to introduce this phenolphthalein powder in the hand of one of the patients who visited one of the hospitals in our state. And we followed him up. And uh, we followed him up in uh, close circuit TV. And finally, where all he touched, we could identify by applying alkaline solution. We did this test to show you what are the places in the OPD where we should concentrate on disinfecting. So we'll go through this. And uh, in this, you can stop me in between if you want to ask some question. But it's the entire length is about, see, look at the countertop where we could find his hand has been touched. This is the auto refractor, see, on either side. You might wonder, well, on hand, how did it come to the other hand? Probably he was keeping his hand like that. These are the places which needs to be disinfected very, very frequently. The handle, we never disinfected that. It's the place where they hold. And the optical shop, very surprised. He didn't even buy a specs, but on his way, he just kept his hand there. So it is necessary that we disinfect these places periodically. If you have high volume of conjunctivitis, Say every half an hour, just disinfect. And slit lamp practically after every patient it has to be disinfected. You can use any of the disinfecting solutions or agents which you feel is comfortable with you. And this is how you disinfect the slit lamp. I don't think any of us will do. Maybe once a day we will do it. But it's ideal that you do it between in infective patients. You will be doing a lot of service to the community. If you don't do this, you might get more conjunctivitis patients. You might get more money, but you are doing injustice to the society. This uh, contact lens cleaning solution is enough to disinfect these uh, lenses. You just leave it for some time and clean. This is the probe. And whenever you're handling, this is under the uh, personal protection equipment. When you're handling infected material, use protective gears. Of course, in ophthalmology, we may not need that much protection, but whenever you are doing surgeries like uh, DCR, you might spill blood. How to disinfect blood? Pour hypochlorite solution, that is the bleach solution. Allow it to get disinfected before you clean it and discard it. And this should be discarded in the yellow container. I don't think we do all this. We just take, see, before examining the patient, look at him, disinfecting him himself with alcohol-based disinfectant. Ideally, if you have 10 cataract patients, you're going to see them 
post operatively between cases you have to do this what we do we go in a hurry pull out the 10 and while discarding clothes you shouldn't co combine the contaminated with the non contaminated see you putting that you are going to contaminate the non contaminated uh, dress also so it has to be discarded in separate segregate at the source and reusing disposable needle which is seen look at the way it has been disposed of it's in our country we have to take care we are, we are answerable to the society these are the scenes what we what i saw in some of the hospitals outside imagine this person was asked to wear glove for segregating the biological waste medical waste look at the glove he is wearing because he is not aware look at the carelessness in which the needles are discarded the waste disposable bin they are not maintained properly all this is going to contribute to the spread of infection and we are answerable for all this see along with food waste needles are seen cheat it will cheat you don't use that needles again look at the way they, it has been discarded carelessly and this uh, staff you see here is giving an injection she is about 25 years experience and look at the way still she is giving see the cloth touching the needle we need to educate them unless we learn we cannot educate them she has 25 years of experience but still she is not aware about safe injection which we need to teach them and rubbing is a wrong method actually and in one doctor's table i saw this the needle along with thermometer recapping what he was saying do not recap needle and if at all you need to one hand technique now we'll go to the waste disposal look at the biological waste with general garbage medical waste lands up as garbage you are doing injustice to the society it has to be categorized disinfected and disposed in the most proper way advocated to us waste generation and segregation is very important and we have specific colored containers for different waste yellow is for infectious material non plastic like cotton blood this is infectious and non infectious plastics so whatever you put in that like cotton blood stained anything whatever is infectious plastics glove tubings iv sets all that should go in syringe without the needle no sharp should go inside this and the black is the general waste like papers iol covers all those things should go in the black i don't think we are following all this and the needle cutter very rarely we see it now the advocation is don't burn the needle cut them at the hub so both the syringe as well as the needle is useless after that it cannot be reused reuse, reuse is one place where we help in uh, spreading infection and look at the way it is being handled the waste it's put in another cover so that you don't contaminate and packed this high density polypropylene plastics are used in this which can be autoclaved see the container in which it is being carried maybe this may not be practical in small hospitals or small clinics but in bigger hospital this can be done but we should help them do it in smaller hospitals also there are methods for disinfecting like what i showed you blood in 
the packs are autoclaved before it is uh, burnt or in, uh, sent to the incinerator. Shredding of plastic. Most of you would have not seen all these things happening. This is the incinerator. Ideally, plastic should not be burned. Plastic item out of shred should be re sent for recycling after disinfecting. But these bags are high density, ideally should not be burned, but we, we have no other option in doing it. And uh, the smoke, what has to come out, should be white, should not be dark. White smoke is ideal. Now this thing which, we, which I am showing now, you can do it practically in your uh, clinic. Whenever you are using a syringe or needle, of course you may, might have a lab also. You make double bucket with sieve in it and drop your syringe along with the needle along it. What, what you contain, the solution contained inside is disinfecting fluid. So you are disinfecting. Then after that you just cut it. And get the needle separately like this, in small cement container, buried deep. That's the safest way to do. Now, from OPD, we are entering the OT theater, or a temple. How much respect we give to the temple, we'll see. Look at the footwear we use in the theater. Keep it upside down. See the grade of dirt gradually increasing with each. We may not even see what is happening. We may not wear the proper footwear in the theater. This is the air uh, cut curtain which prevents. And bindis should not be worn in the hospital, in the theater. Proper mask cap should be worn. Look at that. This should not be allowed. There should be discipline. No wearing of street clothes in the theater. See this wearing theater dress over the street dress. And there should be multiple doors before you enter the theater. Multiple barriers. Now we will go into the hand hygiene. Before entering the theater, a casual wash is important and disinfecting the microscope. You should not spray directly onto the microscope. You will be spoiling the optics. So take in cotton, rub over it, disinfect. This is one place which is very important as far as ophthalmology is concerned. Any sediment on the microscope, when you adjust the microscope, is going to fall directly on the eye. It's going to infect. So this place, we normally don't do. We just remove, move the microscope, start operating. But disinfect it before you start the theater. And the lens, you should not disinfect, I mean, uh, clean directly with the cotton. Usually a distilled water sh should be used to clean. Otherwise, the coating will be affected. That's the way you clean the, in a circular manner with distilled water. Spray the disinfectant on the table end and cover it up for say 10 minutes before you start the theatre. It will go a long way in preventing infection. Now, coming to scrubbing. She is very sentimental about the ring, wedding ring. She refuses to remove. No. No excuses. 
it has to be removed the ring and using the brush it's called the nail brush you use it only for the nail not for your entire arm this is the wrong method of doing it but i still find it being done in most of the hospitals even now and look at the way a surgeon is after that look at the way he is closing it he is using his arm and mixing soap with uh, betadine lotion is wrong especially the carbolic soap carbolic soap will neutralize your betadine iodine so you wash with soap clean it dry it then uh, start with your uh, betadine using water from bucket it's wrong you should not do all that look at his uh, mask look at his hair look at the way he is holding his hand down soap cakes should let's see all these things minor things but it's it will uh, it will uh, cause contamination ideal is to use the liquid soap now we have the dispensers like this no touch which you can use for disinfecting now we'll, we'll go into the proper scrubbing the european norm 1500 we have the six steps we'll be demonstrating all the six steps now sleeve up just wet your hand before you apply the betadine solution you have the infrared sensor there so you don't touch anything and these are the steps being followed first is the social spread you spread the betadine about an inch above the elbow so interdigital on the dorsum on the four palm to palm the dorsum interdigital space on the other hand the knuckle thumb wrist this has to continue for at least 3 and 1/2 minutes because beta didn't takes i didn't takes about 3 uh, minutes to act as antimicrobial nail brush is only for the nail nothing more than that that too it is not very necessary and if you feel your nails are not that clean you can use the nail brush otherwise it's not necessary now to demonstrate why we follow all these steps i have uh, introduced water color and rub the hand in a casual way like what you wash your hand before your food and quite vigorously it has been done this is the way we wash casually looks as if everything is fine but when you analyze it you see the web space it has not been touched the thumb the dominant thumb has never been touched none of the web space has been covered tips not been covered at all so that's why we have the european norm 1500 where we have to follow these steps interdigital dorsum palm the knuckle thumb see now slowly gradually all the surface are being getting covered the rest look at that not a bit of a space has been left behind 
it took two days for him to wash that paint away yes. can you increase the volume now we will have a small law uh, okay rhyme for you to just relax Okay, we'll come back to business. After you wash your hand, you'll have to dry your hand. Do you think this is the proper way of drying? No. So we'll see the proper ways. Is that the proper way again? That's it. We'll see another person doing it. that looks fairly good and this is the proper way the four corner technique look at him do it and that expert is sitting right in front you can ask him anything you want this is the four corner technique where you don't touch any of the surface you have cleaned once that's the excellent way of doing it and then using the alcohol based disinfectant and all the six steps what you have described earlier should be used again now look at the apron he is taking out the apron see where all he is holding it before he is wearing it now we have of course the disposable ones it's quite time consuming also there is a way of folding the apron we'll show you how to do it gown this one is actually a disposable one being reused there again this is one method you can fold your gown nothing but the back flap is folded vertically and the arm uh, the the entire thing is folded half and then into three and make it a make it a w like shape get back if you autoclave it this way when you take it out from you just need to put in your arm inside and it opens up it's a beautiful way of doing it then once you have worn your uh, apron you have the gloves this is what is advocated no touch technique but there are problems with this also which we'll be showing now See, the first glove has gone in look at the second glove look at the back of it it rolls in before it comes out see it rolls in before it comes out so it, it has touched the skin the outer surface is a touch the skin you can see it in slow motion now see it is rolled inwards can you see and when you now you see you are touching that place 
To prevent that, you have the no-touch technique. It may be a little difficult initially, but if you start practicing, it's very easy to do it. And this is for the surgeon, the staff is helping to wear the glove, no touch technique, again. If you have the roundabout gown, it can be worn like this. Then cleaning the glove powder. There are different ways we do it. This is using the saline, there's a chance of contamination when you try to open the saline bottle. So there's another way of doing it is using fluid from IV line to clean. But see here, she's touching the tip accidentally. So there are problems with any method you do it. So open the bottle and wash. To overcome this problem, we have the powder-free gloves available. Cheetle's forceps should not be used in the theatre. Should not be banned. It should be totally banned. The way we stand in the theatre, look at the back contaminating the next table which is going to be used for the next surgery. And introducing any item to the sterile area should not cross the sterile area. It should be outside the sterile area because anything on top of the pack what you are going to open up is going to drop on the sterile area. That's the proper way of introducing any surgical item to the sterile area. Maybe very simple things, but they are very practical things which can be followed in the theatre. To demonstrate that, I put powder on top of a cover. Imagine they are the bacterial agents. See, when you are trying to open, where is it falling? We do this very commonly in our theatre. And make sure your set instruments are autoclave properly. This is the TST indicator which is turned and maintain proper records, theatre records, sterility, all the implants, whatever you do, maintain a register. This will be a, it'll take a long way in uh, helping you in medical legal cases. Transferring patients in trolley, you need a separate trolley for the theatre, sterile area. See, this is crossing the field, this is wrong. Preparing a patient before surgery. From center to the periphery. Cleaning the lid margin. Make sure you don't touch. If you have not uh, trimmed the lashes, you can use the tapes like this to isolate it from the field of surgery. But be very careful while sticking them.
cleaning the FACO handpiece between cases with spirit. It is very, very dangerous to do it. It's better that you don't do anything, just change the tip and the sleeve and start using for this. And these are the things we commonly see in the theatre. Peeping, when the theatre is going on. You should be very strict with them. Pinching nose. While they are in the theatre. Leaning on the walls. They are all uh, disinfected places where you don't, don't allow them to. Proper way of standing in the theatre. Visitors should stand like that. See the cautery hanging out and holding it underneath without knowing that it's using mobile, especially the anesthetist. All these things may be very silly things, but it's happening. And then look at the surgeon in between cases. Where is he going? In theatre dress, no. Please don't do that. Use separate chapel for the toilets. How holding the handle with the glove. That's again a mistake. You're contaminating. Disposing. Glove in yellow is wrong. Should go to the red container only. This is the proper way of removing the glove. And should go into the L red container. And after the surgery, what normally we do? We remove the gown and just give it a throw. Should not do. No. Now we'll see how it has to be disposed. Should be folded outside in. And ideally, if the gown is uh, contaminated with blood or body fluids, the gown has to be removed first. Folded, discarded, and then the glove. And th these scenes are very common in our theatres, should be avoided. Hanging your mask. Now coming to the cleaning of instruments. We have the disinfectant fluids which is commercially available. And this one, what is, what is the mistake? See, see, the, see that, what is spraying out, causing aerosols. So ideally it should be cleaned underneath the cleaning solution of the water. And the tubings should be flushed. The ultrasonic cleaner, it's good, it removes. Please avoid enzymatic tablets for cleaning because it can cause tasks, any remnants of it. Mild disinfecting solutions are available exclusively for instrument. Do it, rinse it properly, dry it properly before you send it for water cleaving. Drying, drying is very important. See what, see the mistake. This is wrong. You don't pack it immediately after. You should dry it.
proper drying is very important for auto claving. Steam will condense on only dry instruments, not wet. Check all the instruments before it is packed for autoclaving. Split. Look at that. Oiling can be done, but clean it properly, make sure there is no rust, and pack it. The container should be porous, so the steam enters properly. Use of paper is in good in order claiming because it helps in drying. When you use paper, the shelf life of autoclaved instruments is longer. Even after six months, it's safe. But don't keep it for six months. Whenever you pack, label it when you have packed it. And put an external indicator, class one, just to make sure that this set has gone in. Write the date over it and TST and wet pack should never be used. It is unsterile. Whether you have taken it from the autoclave, it is wet. Now we have the pouches. One side it is the paper, but the other one is the polypropylene. You can even have a double pouch for autoclave or as well as ETO sterilization. You can use it. The shelf life is quite long with us, but make sure the pack is sealed before you open and use it. Open packs are not sterile anymore. The bins, packing the bin, bin is not really recommended these days but still it is being used but whenever you put your load in make sure that there is enough space for the steam to penetrate Make sure that vents are open. This is a wrong way of just packing it and squeezing everything into one container. See that? A wrong way of doing it. When you find a little space there, squeeze it in. This is the classical horizontal, commonly used auto claim. It's got the steam chamber separate and the various phases what I explained earlier. The sterilization, the phase three and the dry phase. All this phase has to go. Whenever you're using any uh, pack with uh, or container without uh, sieve in it, keep it open. This is the vertical actually. It has got the ga pressure gauge alone. It doesn't have the thermo thermometer or other gauges in it. Now we have the automated uh, autoclave, bigger hospitals, the double door one is available. All the parameters are monitored automatically in them. This is the flash autoclave. Use it when it is absolutely necessary for emergency only. 
this is the Bovidic test. You keep a sheet of that uh, Bovidic test before. This is to check the pre-vacuum phase of the uh, autoclave, whether you are removing the air completely before you autoclave. And the Bovidic sheet should be uniformly, there should be uniform change in color. That means there is no air pocket in it. Now this is the LX test which I was talking about. You put the indicator there and it's got a very long tube in it. Put there and the tube is also attached to it. So if there is air within the tube that indicator is not going to change its color. So it's going to check the vacuum phase. Now we have the ETO sterilizer. The only disadvantage is its chemical nature, which is very toxic, as well as the long time it takes for it to get aerated once it's safe for uh, surgical use. This is the plasma sterilizer, which I was talking about. It's a bit expensive, but it's uh, helpful for uh, instruments which cannot withstand heat. Maintain the registers properly for all the autoclaving or the sterilization you're doing. This is the class one signal log indicator that you can use like this as a bovidic test if you don't have the bovidic sheet and this is the TST it has to turn the LR has to turn blue and storing the autoclaved or sterilized instrument should be very pakka, the humidity should be maintained in the room and sterility to the utmost important. Sidex, a big no to ophthalmic practice. The reason is there is no standardization or validation for its sterility. It's a high level disinfectant only. Now we'll go back to the theater and show you how the wall, the floor, the table has to be cleaned. These are some of the disinfectant, no financial interest in that. Each company gives a specification for different concentration. Please follow that. That is meant for disinfecting equipments in the theater like the microscope. Say, so don't, do, don't do this. Measure it properly. Is using the cap. Measure it, use it. That's the wrong way of cleaning. Ideally, unidirectional. That's the wrong way of doing it. Ideally, unidirectional.
This is another way of doing it. That's the wrong way of cleaning. The proper way is unidirectional. Why do we do that? See, when you do it that way, you're going to displace it. Unidirectional, see. You're bringing everything to one point and taking it out. And what has been recommended now is the three bucket technique. There's controversy in it, but what is lately recommended is the three bucket technique. I'm just demonstrating the three bucket technique. It's quite logical that uh, three bucket is going to help you. It's something like washing your cloth. You use three different buckets of water to rinse away the soap or, or the dirt. Similarly, what is shown here is the three bucket. Whatever dirt you're cleaning, then clean with water again before you go into the disinfectant again. It's quite logical. And this is what is being recommended now. Ultimately, what you want is a clean theater. Whichever you feel the method acceptable to you, to your common sense, do it. Fogging is not advisable now. If you can clean your walls and floors and your equipment properly, that's the best thing. And your air quality is vital. Tell me, tell me when it's time. Huh? Just tell me. We'll stop with that. Formalin, no more advocated. It's carcinogenic and it's better that you don't use formalin. Don't use broom in your theater. This is a real scene and it's not enacted. Registers are very important that you maintain periodically. In including autoclave, sterilization, cleaning, everything. Yes, I think I can stop with that. We'll come to a, the end of it. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Thank you so much, sir.